Hi, so today I'd like to take some time out of my workday to predict the future for you. So, a lot of you may have noticed that with the iPhone 6, it's a little bit more, a little bit more prone to having issues with touch than the older iPhones. So if you drop it and you break the screen very often on the older iPhones, you had issues with the buttons, they weren't really made that well, and you had issues with the screen cracking if you dropped it, which is to be expected of most phones. Now, with the newer iPhones, the buttons have gotten a little bit more durable, so you don't have the widespread death of power button, the widespread death of the home button, the widespread death of the volume buttons that you had with the 4 and the 4S, where the buttons were frankly atrocious. That's kind of been fixed, which is good. But you may notice that when you drop it, that you lose touch functionality on the screen. You can still see the screen, but when you go to swipe, nothing actually works. And I'd like to talk about that with this video and why that is and what Apple is going to probably do about it. You may have taken the phone to a store and had them replace the screen because you have no touch function. And they replace the screen and you still have no touch function. Maybe your screen was cracked and you were thought it was just the screen that was broken and then they replace it and you have no touch function. Why is that? It's because of an issue with the touch IC and how that touch IC is soldered onto the motherboard. Now, on this channel, you'll very often hear me saying that reflowing and reballing is bullshit. It's not a real solution. And when I'm talking about reflowing being bullshit or reballing being bullshit, I'm talking about reflowing the solder joints to fix the problem. The reason I always say that that's bullshit is because I'm usually referring to people who are trying to fix the solder balls within flip chip designs, particularly graphics chips, where that's not something that you're going to fix. So you're, pretty, you're trying to fix solder balls that are broken when in reality it's bumps inside the chip that are having issue, not the solder balls. Here, the issue is indeed with the solder balls. Now, phones are manufactured a little bit differently than laptops and other electronics. Because this is a phone, because it is such a hyper-portable device that's going to get banged around in a pocket, that's going to get tossed, that's going to get dropped, far more often than a stationary device, these are manufactured in a different fashion so that they don't fail as often. Now, one of the things you may find driving Jessa crazy in some of her videos on the iPad Rehab channel, which I'll link to below that you should check out, is this thing called underfill. So how do we create a device where we have all these balls sitting under a chip in a device that's going to be dropped and thrown around regularly, but keep these balls from cracking? The way they do it is they inject something called underfill under the chip. So once they're done manufacturing it, once they're done putting together the board and putting that chip on the board, is they're going to inject underfill all around the chip. It's this epoxy-like material. It's kind of, just think of it like a glue that hardens if you're not really familiar with underfill, and it's going to be around the chip, and it's going to hold the chip in place so that even if it's getting dropped, the, the pressure and the stress is being placed on the underfill rather than it being placed on the actual chip itself. This is under many chipsets in modern smartphones, and it's under many chipsets inside of the actual iPhone, but it's not under the touch IC in the iPhone 6. So when you drop it, all of the other ICs are kind of protected from damage because they have this underfill material under it, but with the iPhone 6, the touch ICs themselves don't have underfill under them. So what happens is when you drop it, everything else winds up being okay, except for the screen, obviously. But the touch IC can become fractured or damaged, or the solder balls can become disconnected or broken, and they would not have broken if there was underfill there. And the problem that you're seeing is you're having a lot of people go to the Apple store with this issue, there are people who have driven 10 or 20 or 100 miles to their nearest Apple store only to be told, oh, I'm sorry, we don't acknowledge this as a problem, but would you like to buy a new iPhone? They don't tell customers that they can get it fixed at an independent service center. They don't offer repair of it at all. The only option that Apple offers people when they have this problem is, would you like to buy a new iPhone? To which I say, fuck you, because you designed the product with this defect. Now, if we are going to look at Apple's history in dealing with stuff like this, let's look at 2007 and 2008 when the 8600 GT issues were happening with the, um, with the A1226 and A1260 MacBooks. No, there's no problem. No, there's no problem. You must be using it wrong. And then, oh, extended warranty until January 2012. Let's look at something like the iPhone 4 with, oh, you must be holding it wrong. Oh, no, you're doing it wrong. Oh, no, our phone is fine. Oh, never mind, we were wrong. Here's a free bumper case for everybody. Then we had the issue with the 2011 MacBook Pro. You guys are misusing it. Oh, you're not supposed to use this thing for intensive uh, graphics rendering and encoding and stuff like that. It's just a laptop, even though we marketed it that way on our own fucking website. 20,000 people get together and petition against this. 
Class action lawsuit gets started against Apple. What do you know? In 2014, hey, extended warranty until the end of 2016. Not only are we going to fix the 2011 MacBook Pro that we've been ignoring issues on for the past three fucking years, but we're also going to toss in some other models in there that are also fucked up that you probably didn't even know about yet. This is what Apple does. What they do is they deny a problem. They blame the user. They blame the way they use the device. They say they take no accountability. And then once enough people notice that something is wrong, then, and only then, will they release an extended warranty protocol and go, sorry, my bad. So here's what's going to happen with the iPhone 6. People are going to go to Apple stores. Hundreds of thousands of people are going to drive tens of hundreds of thousands of miles to Apple stores to be told, I'm sorry, we don't acknowledge this issue. Yes, I understand that all modern smartphones have underfill under the important ICs, but we don't, and it's not an issue. Sorry, fuck you. But would you like to buy a brand new 6S or an SE? That's what they're going to do. Then enough people are going to get pissed off about this on the internet, and once enough people are pissed off about this, then Apple's going to get a class action lawsuit against them. Then after that, Apple is going to start getting in hot water, and then they will release an extended warranty program. But they're not going to do it unless you start bitching. And here's the thing I want to get across to all of you, because I know that there are a lot of people who are going to watch this video who are going to be fans of Apple, they like Apple products, they like the iPhone, they like the way it's designed, and they're going to think that I'm an asshole for picking on Apple. If you're one of those people, here's what I would suggest. If you like Apple, if you like iPhones, if you like them as a company, don't you want them to produce better products? Don't you want them to fix the flaws in their products? Don't you want them to be friendlier towards the end user? That's going to happen with something called constructive criticism. So, for example, I love Lenovo products. I love the ThinkPad. I think it's an amazing computer. But if people don't scream at the top of their lungs when they do things like destroy the trackpad, destroy the track point, then they're going to continue with their mistake and the product line will be worse. So in spite of the fact that I love Lenovo, I have several videos up that have hundreds of thousands of views talking about the design mistakes that they've made, and as a result, the newer machines like the T450 and the T460 do not have these design flaws. I love Lenovo products. I am a fan of Lenovo products, but what I believe being a true fan of a product is means criticizing them when they've done something wrong so that they can fix it. If you truly love Apple and you truly love the iPhone, don't you want them to properly support their products? Don't you want them to put underfill under the two chips that are going to be the most easily damaged in the case of a drop or let's say just walking back and forth? Because this is not something that's just going to happen if you drop the phone. I want you to think about this. If, you have, if you're walking fast and you have in your pants pocket, the phone is going ba-bum, 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 ba-bum against your thigh as you walk, you're constantly doing that. So you need that type of protection under the ICs in the phone that the iPhone 6 does not offer. And it is a very clear issue. It's being covered on many forums. A lot of people are having these problems with the device. And the only thing that Apple's saying is, I'm sorry, we don't acknowledge that issue. Would you like a new phone? And that's bullshit. And the, the, the really interesting part here is when people actually mention this issue on their forums and start describing what's the cause of it, that they, will, they will delete it. So they know that it's an issue. So check this out. So Mark Schaefer, he has um, his own repair business down in Florida, and he also works for iPad Rehab, made a post on the Apple Community Support Forums. And in this post, he explains exactly what the issue is. He explains how it occurs, why it occurs, and how you properly repair it. He's not plugging his own business. The name, uh, his name on this forum is Mark underscore Pro. You can't Google that and find out who he is or who he works for. This is not advertising his own business in any way. All he's doing is telling you how it works, how it fails, and what the repair is. And, w and, and he's doing it in a very kind, polite, and, pro and you know, traditionally professional fashion. Now, if you see here, very shortly thereafter, his post was edited and they removed every single part that describes what the actual problem is. And you'll see here that what Mark does is he says, not sure why the host edited out my detailed description of how and why, how and why touch fails, but I know it's not against the terms of use to describe this information. The short version is that the touch ICs can be replaced for about the quarter of the cost of an out of warranty replacement, and that this is a permanent solution to the problem. And this is the issue, uh, th th this means that they realize it's an issue. If Apple did not realize that this was an issue, then they wouldn't be having 
moderators on their own community support forums deleting posts that are discussing when this is an issue. You don't try to silence people. You don't try to hide information. If you have nothing to hide, you don't try to silence good information if you're not doing anything wrong. So something kind of fishy is going on here. And again, what I would suggest, if you are an Apple fan, if you do love the iPhone, be a part of ensuring that the next iPhone is better. Be a part of making sure that the company that you love supports their products for the people who've decided to spend two of their paychecks on them, is all I'm going to say here. So what do I think is going to happen? I think they're gonna, Apple's going to follow the exact same pattern that they followed with prior issues with their prior products. They're going to not acknowledge it as an issue. Once they acknowledge it as an issue, they're going to say that you must be doing something wrong. And then once enough people rise up and complain about it, they will finally decide, you know what? Maybe, just maybe, you, all you hundreds of thousands of people are right. Sorry. And by then, the praise the problem. By the time that happens, a lot of people have already moved on. So many people who had the 2011 MacBook Pro with the GPU issues moved on to a new computer when theirs died in 2012, and 2013, and 2014, and early 2015. You have to realize that people who are using these devices in a mission-critical environment are not people who are going to say, oh, you know what, I'm just going to wait two years and hope that Apple releases a recall. No, if they use it for their everyday work, they are going to spend their money, or if they don't have the money, they're going to beg, borrow, and steal to get a new tool that they need to do their job. If they rely on that tool every single day, they simply can't afford to wait for a recall. So the big issue here is going to be that a lot of people may have actually moved on to buying a new device, which really, really sucks. We need to get some type of extended warranty program or at the very least a low-cost repair option available at Apple for these iPhone 6 Touch ICs because, frankly, it should not be happening. It doesn't happen on this phone, which is two or 250 bucks. It doesn't happen on a lot of devices that cost a fraction of what Apple's do, and it doesn't happen on a lot of devices that uh, are in the same class as Apple, that are in the same, you know, same speed, same screen quality, same, you know, just general specification. And above all, it doesn't even happen to Apple's older devices. Apple has designed phones better than this in the past. They need to design phones better than this in the future. And they need to take accountability and responsibility for the devices that people have been paying for right now that don't work the way they're supposed to.